tell us, Molly, um, uh, when and uh, how did this whole collaboration come up? Uh, who, whose idea was it? Uh, what happened? Really? Well, let's, let's start with lunch with Tini. Tini said, come to Paris. I want to ask you something. And uh, she said, Jackie, you know, has been making the underwater kites, which I knew she was doing in Cadiz and taking photographs, but she wanted to make a film. So Tini said, please, oui. this is a good moment for Jackie to get away. It was a good moment for me to get away also. And um, she said, talk to Jackie, please, and see if you can do the filming. So I said, Jackie, what, what's the story with the kites? And she said, well, I think we can go do in a big, big swimming pool in Paris. And I thought, no, we can't do that, Jackie, because always in the background we'll see the stripes on the pool and the wall of the pool. Let's go to the Bahamas. <laughs> Why not? So um, she said, I want to do this. I'm thinking of asking David to do the sound. Now, David Tudor was a very good friend of Jackie's, and he was a good friend of mine because um, my good friend John Cage, of course, and worked with David. And I'd known David, and Jackie'd known David, and they. Jackie and David had done some projects with uh, Jackie's work and David's sound. Mm -hmm. So we arranged um, to go to the Bahamas and shoot underwater because I knew some people that were diving. And um, I, of course, was not good at diving. Jackie was very good. <laughs> but, um, and I'd never shot any film underwater, but I was young, and so it didn't occur to me that I couldn't do it because mm -hmm. I was quite sure in those days I could do pretty much anything I wanted to. Why not? Mm -hmm. So we went, um, a, another friend had, had organized to get me a camera from Aeroflex in Germany with a housing that you put the camera in the housing, you go underwater, you shoot the film. So we took, Jackie brought the kites and I brought, you know, the camera and the film and everything to change. And it was a little bit more complicated than I thought it would be. But um, David came and David, <laughs> David was one of these people with, he was just brilliant and he had this very light spirit and um, he approached everything as possible. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think that um, one of the great gifts of John Cage and Merce Cunning was Cunningham was, everything's possible, of course you can do that. Yes, of course, you ask this person and he'll ask that person and we'll all go here and we'll all do that. And it was that, well, you know that kind of spirit that there was in those days. And um, so we went and I had some friends to uh, drive the boat and to kind of take care of us and also they were divers to help with the kites. Um, because Jackie's kites are very long. I think they're, um, I don't know how many meters they are, but at least uh, no, so, so about 15 meters. 15 so meters maybe, kind of. yeah. And you know, they're such, um, such a variety. She was such a wonderful artist, very, uh, very particular, very discreet in the way she worked and very private. I mean, I think very, very few people knew what a, mm -hmm. what a great artist she really was. But each one of these kites, I mean, she is sewn by hand, and this, every shape is different, the colors are different, um, and her concerns were always how this was going to make a form and a shape in either in, in the water, the underwater kites, or in the sky. And um, it was very, very particular, but you never knew what was going to happen because you're working with nature. So that was, um, and David, of course, loved doing anything where he didn't know what was going to happen because the idea of improvisation was probably, the, it, it might have been, I'm, not, I'm just imagining that it was the most significant um, artistic thrust in those eight, eight days that you work you work with it from an improvisational point of view. And whatever happens, you usually use it. You say, oh, that's interesting. Well, and yeah. then you keep going in that direction. So David was completely ready. He had done underwater sounds before because he came with a lot of baby, baby food jars. In the States, you can buy a little jar 
that has baby food in them. So he would put, he had microphones that you could use underwater, but you can't really use them in salt water. So he would put them uh, in a jar that had um, uh, a, 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 a viscous, viscous uh, liquid, it's, um, but neutral. So he put the microphone in the jar and put the top, had a little punch a hole in the top, and then he sealed the top with wax. And then he had a long, 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 long line that he dropped down, and also a rope on the line to pull them if something went wrong. So he was, um, he had a lot, I think he had maybe four or five microphones that he did this in. He, um, he would have everything on the boat, and he had his earphone so he could hear what he was recording. And he would drop these down, and Jackie and I would get in the water, um, and with the tanks, and I had the camera, Jackie had the kites, and the two divers that were helping us, uh, Jackie needed help to, to pull the kites, because they were, they were so long, and we're trying. She also didn't want, she was very, Jackie was very specific when, with artwork, and she did not want bubbles, she didn't want fish, and she didn't want any background, no coral or anything like that. And I thought, okay, let's see if we can do that. Mostly we did. And they, they pulled, you know, they pulled the kites past us. And we, we went for many days, I, I can't remember exactly, maybe five or six. And David's recording all the time. So he has hours of sound and I have hours of film. And uh, we weren't sure how, how any of it were, would work out because of course, in those days, you don't you don't know what your film is if it was okay or not okay. You have to, you know, I had to take it to New York. <laughs> so it was many weeks later before I found out did I have anything. David knew about the sound, but he wasn't sure uh, how he was going to use it. And um, it was just it was just nice to be, you know. I mean, I love Jackie. I'd known Jackie for oh I don't know years and years and years, and uh, I admired her as an artist and. Um, and she was just enough older, maybe 15 years older than I am, I'm, I'm, I've forgotten exactly. So I looked up to her and she taught me many things, you know, um, all, all the things I wanted to know about how to cook like a French person, mm -hmm. you know, how to gather um, various mushrooms and leaves of berries, the flowers to make the tisane, everything, I, I, all those things. Um, she was terrific. So I was happy to be with the two of them, and uh, we, we all went dispersed, and I had this film, I had hours of film, so I went back and looked at it, and I thought, we should probably uh, make it into a structure that is, um, has, that the structure itself will carry a little bit of the weight, otherwise you can't just look at hours of kites going through the water, it doesn't really mean anything if you don't have some structure. So there were three three sets of kites that uh, that Jill is, you can see these, these are all underwater kites. And um, we, they're the big kites, the medium sized kites and the little ones. So I decided we'd have, I'd make three films using each of those kites um, with the best footage I could, I could find. Because some of the footage was not, was not great. And you know, the, um, the cameras were, were good in those days, but um, my ability to adjust light and stuff was not, not so great underwater. And the colors of the kites changed. Jackie worried a little bit about that. And um, I thought, well, I better not make these decisions by myself. So she came to Germany where I was living and we chose the sections that she, that she liked the best. And um, so I made three films. With, three, with each set of kites, like film one has A kites, B kites, and C kites, and film two has B kites, C kites, and A kites, and film three, so, so, mm -hmm. so like that. So it's the same, the same sets of kites, but different material, because um, you don't, you see some things repeated, but not everything repeated, mm -hmm. and you never see it in the same way. So then I thought, well, it would be better to make it in the uh, this pr uh, proportion that is like the old video proportion, 
uh, not the not the, the new one is long. The old one was more like more like a square. So I thought this would be. I'll do three and three and three, and then just vary them. So then you have a structure where you can see similar but not the same uh, information because the eye is so quick. You know immediately what you're seeing, so you can't just repeat it. Uh, but you can crank it, turn it a little bit. And so we showed we showed the um, material to David the three. Uh, three sections. It was. It's 21 minutes. Th three sections of seven minute each. So he took the sound. He had. He made small kites, me medium kites, and large kites sound. And then he did a mix. We did a mix in Paris, and um, that's what the soundtrack is. It's actually can be more complex. When we first showed it at Beauvoir, we the only equipment we had was. Um, VHS, which is not very good, it's, it doesn't look doesn't look very good. But the guys at Bobourg were so nice; they built um, they built a machine that would keep the the um, the video players in sync because they have to rewind and then they have to play again. So they they were great. So that and they had we had the sound in more sections, but it was not um, you couldn't really absorb the differences quite as well. So David David did a different mix where you could you can hear the different sounds more clearly. I mean you can absorb it more clearly. Otherwise it was more like a, a wall, a confusing wall of sound. And um, I like the final mix a lot. Um, you know and David David was he didn't manipulate the sound too much that he had recorded. He he took the sound, he he could he took higher sounds and different sounds for the different sets of tapes, but he didn't do, he didn't make changes electronically in the sound. Um, and he was, you see, he had hours of, hours of sound too. He was on the boat all the time because, because David was on the boat, but David can't swim, so he never got in the water. I was going to ask you, yes. After a day or two, I said, Jackie, do you think David can swim? And she said, oh, no, of course not. <laughs> so, um, and he was, but he'd be listening to the sounds and he wasn't sure what he was hearing, so he would ask one of the divers, these two Bahamian guys, and the diver, divers would listen. They were so interested, and they said, oh, that'd be the shrimp eating on the coral. Mm -hmm. Those are the grunt fish, you know, they would tell them what they are. And then sometimes it's just the motion of the water hitting the anchor or something. You hear kind of mm -hmm. different, different tones and things. But uh, we had a wonderful time. It's, uh, I mean, they're wonderful. We, we spent other times together doing other things, but this was particularly, particularly beautiful, beautiful time. <laughs>